for making more mini cakes. My name is Lori and you're watching The Icing Artist. Thanks to Chromebooks for sponsoring this video. Most days it seems impossible to keep on top of everything, especially for me. But I'm gonna show you guys how I use my Chromebook to run The Icing Artist. To make our very round froggy cake, I piped some vanilla cake into these really mini sphere cake pans, which are actually bath bomb molds, but they're food grade and they're gonna work. Once they're baked, I just pop them out of the pan. I was surprised at how easily these popped out. Then I just level off the top and kind of rounded off those edges so they're nice and round. Now, because I don't want this froggy going rolling away, I just leveled off the top part of the round part so it has more of a flat bottom. Layered that up with some green buttercream and stuck the second half right on top. I found it impossible to ice these tiny little mini cakes without them wobbling around all over the place. So I stuck a shish kebab skewer right in the center of it and that's gonna help it wobbling. Once it's done being crumb coated, I'm just gonna pull that right out. I used this technique in my last mini cake video, like right here, if you guys have not seen that, and it worked great. Then I just rolled out my green fondant and covered that over my little mini sphere, using my hands to really just tuck that fondant right underneath the little sphere and trimmed off the excess. Now, I need to make some froggy legs that looks like this frog is just gonna hop right off the table. Just using a log of fondant, kind of tapered off the one end and bent it slightly, cut some little froggy toes, and then glued that onto my cake using some water. I wanna give them some like big bug eyes. So I just rolled little balls of white fondant, add a little black part and a little white part and glued those right onto the cake. And for his mouth, I wanted to make a really funny little mouth. So I took a little ball of green fondant and stuck that onto my paintbrush and then make a little circle so he's like, like he just saw a yummy fly that he's gonna go and try to eat. I can't get over his facial expression. But that's the first one down, four more to go. Of course guys, I will leave a link where you guys can buy those little sphere pans in the description box below. And because I am so forgetful, I'm going to leave a reminder for myself. Next up, I'm gonna need to cut myself some round cakes for our bunny. So I poured some vanilla cake batter into an eight inch square cake pan, left off the top, and now I'm just gonna use my circle cutters to cut out these little mini cakes. And again, the nice thing about these mini cakes is you guys could bake one big cake and you can make countless mini cakes. And I just cut my cake in half, filled it with some pink buttercream icing, gave it a nice crumb coat, and now I'm gonna cover it with some white fondant, very similar to the big bunny cake we made up here. We're gonna need some big pointy bunny ears. So I just rolled out some thick white fondant and kind of freehand cut out these big ears. And of course, cut out the same kind of shape, but, but pink and smaller, so I could layer that right on top. To keep these ears sticking nice and straight, I just stuck in some spaghetti, and that will hold them perfectly straight. For its little cotton ball tail, I just took a round ball of white fondant, and I rolled it around using my tree bark mold, because that's what I did with the big bunny, so I figured why not do that with the mini bunny. I made some little feet with some little baby toes. <laughs> Everything on these mini cakes are so tiny gonna need some mini little chops and a little baby nose. I can't, I can't help it, it's so adorable. As you guys know, this is the most terrifying part of it. I need to use a black edible marker and draw on those details because you've got the cake done and now if you mess up drawing those eyes or drawing those whiskers, it's gonna look wonky. So you're just crossing your fingers, hoping your hand's not shaking. But thankfully, it turned out super cute. Next up, we're making the beaver cake. It uses a combination of the sphere cake and the round cake. Layered this up and crumb coated it with some chocolate buttercream. Chocolate buttercream smells amazing. And then for his fur, I just used my grass piping tip and just piped on this little chocolate fur going all the way around the cake. I used the same technique when I made that big beaver cake and by the end of it, it looked like cousin it. But don't worry, once you get all those details on, it starts to look like a beaver again. Cut out some big white teeth and some ivory little chops. So far this looks ridiculous, but I promise it's gonna get better. I added on some little whisker dots and a little baby nose, some little eyes and ears. For his arms and feet, I just used a little log of fondant that I had rolled out and used my knife to make little paw lines and stuck those in the cake. Those look really cute. And all that's left is that one little detail that actually makes it look like a beaver, which is that big fat beaver tail. I just used my knife to create, you know, a beaver tail pattern on it and wrap that around the cake. I think this is officially my favorite mini cake so far, and not just because it's covered in chocolate buttercream. I have to take a sneak picture of this one and post on Instagram. Give it a quick edit. I'm just gonna adjust the colors just slightly, and it's good to post right on Instagram. Next up is Mr. Elephant. Now, I have never made an elephant before, so this is gonna be interesting. 
I started my cake off the exact same way I did the little froggy cake, except this one's going to be gray. For my elephant's trunk and ears, I add some Tylus powder into my bonnet because I want these details to dry hard. I really want its trunk to stand like away from its body. So I just rolled up that bonnet into a little log, bent that into the shape I was looking for, and made a little hole on the end. Set that aside for a second. While I wait for those to dry for a few minutes, I'm going to check in and reply to some of those comments on my little beaver cake. Daisy Kate says, that beaver is adorable. Love it. Thanks, Daisy. That one is for sure my favorite. For his big floppy ears, I just roll out some thicker gray fawn and use my circle cutter to cut out a big circle. And because I want a splash of color on this cake, I roll out some thin blue fawn and cut out a smaller blue circle. Layered those up with a little bit of water, cut it in half, and then just bent that around a circle cutter and that helps keep that shape. Now that those details have been drying for a couple minutes, I'm ready to glue those onto my cake just using a little bit of water and I just held those in place for a second until they were nice and stuck. I made him some like little stumpy feet and just used a piping tip to make these like little toes. And I wanted to give this elephant some like really big, you know, like puss in boots, like these big adorable eyes. That's what I wanted this elephant to have. Finally finished off the elephant with those big ears and it kind of makes it look like a mouse effect. <laughs> it's like a cross between an elephant and a mouse. May or may not be the shape of the ears I chose, but either way, I think it looks really cute. Last up, we're making the square fox cake. I just cut out a mini square cake and then carved off part of the top of the cake because I didn't want it to be as tall as my other cakes. I wanted it to be a little bit more flat. Same process here. We crumb coated it and covered it in fawn and now it's ready for the details. And for those details, I just made him a big white belly because I thought that'd be really cute. Similar to the bunny rabbit, I made some thick ears. I'm just going to use some spaghetti to stick those in the cake and hold them up. So they're kind of hovering above the cake board. I cut out a really big fluffy fox tail with a little jagged white tip and just kind of stuck that on the side of him. Finished off with literally the, the tiniest of noses and these little eyes and we're done. I am in love with how these turn out, but I still think the beaver is my favorite. Now that I'm finally completely finished filming for the day, I'm going to send over all of our notes and all the files to our editor on the Slack app. Thank you so much again to Chromebooks for sponsoring this video and really helping me keep more organized with this channel. To learn more about Chromebooks, click the link in my description box below. I am having so much fun miniaturizing my cake, so let me know in the comment section below what you guys want to see me miniaturize next. I've had a lot of requests for the lollipop. And of course, as always, don't forget to come back here again next week so we can make something else into cake. Bye guys.